So we are ready for the next uh, keynote speaker. He is uh, Roberto Barbera from University, University of Catania, INFN, and uh, he will be talking about science gateways. And uh, it's good to see you back with us, Roberto. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Yosef. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, first of all, I uh, would like to thank the organizer to give me the present, the, to give me the opportunity to to give this presentation that was actually scheduled for yesterday, but I couldn't make it. So, uh, actually, talking about science gateways in a short amount of time, 20 minutes, half an hour, is a daunting task. So, I would uh, uh, rather uh, give you some concept and considerations that uh, uh, led us uh, where we are with the developments of science gateways that uh, we are doing in the context of the chain rest project. And then I will describe uh, one of the framework, the one that we are actually working on in the context of chain, which is based on standards. I will try to underline the importance of standards. And then uh, some opportunities, some activities which are already uh, running and uh, carried out in the, in the Arab region on science gateways, and then I'll uh, summarize my presentation. So, um, in the last uh, 20 years, the uh, observational science are more and more shifted towards uh, what we call a, a computational science, a computational intensive research. And uh, somebody says that uh, after 50 years, uh, popper theories, computer simulation are reconcil re reconciling the inductive and deductive approaches of the scientific method. So computational intensive research is spanning across different domains. So we have astrophysics there with supernova, supernova explosions. We have uh, earth sciences, for example, for ozone, with ozone maps uh, measured with satellites uh, on top of the South Pole. We have uh, engineering with computing fluid dynamics. We have energy physics with uh, extremely, lar extremely large uh, AVI ion collisions and LHC experiments. And uh, we have, of course, uh, life sciences with uh, medical images, analysis, and simulations of uh, interior organs. And uh, we have many other use cases that require uh, computation, intense computation. So, a uh, new concept has emerged, what we call e-science. So on one side, we have applications, data, and instruments. And on the other side, we have what we call virtual research communities, which are organized in what we call virtual organizations. So those scientists and researchers need to access the, the data uh, uh, um, and run the applications to analyze them and produce scientific results. So in order to let them to do so, uh, uh, the, the computing centers across the globe which are linked, which are uh, uh, connected to the national research networks have been, the, uh, have been installed with uh, what we call middleware, a software that let them behave as a unique computer and disk where the data and the applications can be found and where virtual research communities and virtual organizations can actually do their day-by-day -day work. So, of, uh, the other problem is that uh, not everybody in the research world belongs to uh, what is called virtual research community. Uh, we, we also have what is called the long tail of science. So we have small groups uh, of researchers or, or even single, singly, single individuals that uh, would benefit a lot from accessing and using this kind of e-infrastructures. So the problem is how we can uh, make their life easier, how we can attract them to use these platforms, and how we can support their research, their research work, and how we can uh, put them in contact uh, with, the, with, with the rest of the large groups and communities which are tackling the same problems around the world. The problem is that uh, uh, 
e using the infrastructures is not straightforward. I mean, uh, uh, usually you have to do, you, you, you have to cope with job description languages, with scripts, and in many cases with comma line based interface. And on top of you, on top of this, you have to cope with uh, grid security infrastructures, which is based on the digital certificates. And uh, in the last years, what we we have we have seen that. Uh, this uh, uh, um, this these concepts are like uh, acted like barriers to for uh, the large adoption of these e infrastructures, and uh, made the learning curve so steep that uh, many non-IT experts from many disciplines uh, uh, were were kept away, were not interested in using this, and they were use uh, 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 normal tools they were more used to to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to cope with. So. In, uh, in the last uh, few years, uh, people are trying to overcome this uh, problem and try to make these e-infrastructures easier to use. And a new, a new paradigm is emerging, what is called a science gateway. So a science gateway is a community-developed set of tools, applications and data that are integrated in a portal or a suite of applications in a, uh, use, in a graphic user interface that is customized to meet the needs of a community. So science gateways are based uh, new generation portals that interface a different kind of infrastructures and uh, uh, behave, uh, I mean, provides users with, uh, with tools which are close to what they use in their day-by-day work, like web browser, for example, to navigate the internet and to access, to access the data. So, the idea is that if we, um, we look at the uh, model for uh, uh, information technology acceptance, uh, the two most important steps to uh, spread a new technology and to make it uh, uptaken by large communities is to provide a perception of usefulness of the technology and uh, demonstrate that it's easy to use. For example, you can guess how this apply to the smartphones that you have in your pocket. I mean, they are very easy to use, and they are they are they are they they, they are useful for uh, for many for many things. So the idea is to develop science gateways in a to 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 give users the perception of the usefulness of the infrastructures and give them provide them with easy access to e infrastructures in order to increase the actual use of the system which is in the end is the most important requirement for sustainability of these uh, uh, platforms across the, across the world. So we are, building, we are building a framework for science gateways because um, uh, in, uh, so far there are lots of science gateways, but many of them are vertical solutions that are developed on top of a given middleware and so they are being customized to work on a, for, for a given uh, a computing model, like grid or cloud or uh, clusters of uh, computers. So here we are trying to leverage on standards. So the first, uh, we, we assume that users belong to identity federations. We are trying to promote the uh, use of federated identities. And then uh, we use uh, two standards. So one is SAGA, which stands for Simple API for Grid Applications. And the other one is OCCI, which is Open Computing, Cloud Computing Interface. And through these standards, uh, we aim at uh, make access to different kinds of infrastructures as seamless as possible, so that uh, people can run applications on high-performance computing clusters, on grids, on clouds, independently of their underlying architecture, and uh, not even uh, seeing the differences between the different, the different uh, um, uh, architecture. And on the other side, we are trying to, uh, to leverage on the OCCI standard to provide a cloud, virtual clouds to virtual organizations, to projects made of clouds which are deployed with, a different, with different middleware, and clouds which belong to the same logical domain. So, Concern, uh, for, to do this, uh, as I said, that we are trying to leverage as much as possible on standards. So first, uh, w our gateways, our framework uh, is fully web-based, so we do not require anything else but uh, a web browser 
to, uh, to interact with this infrastructure. And then uh, we have different standards. So for the presentation layer, we are using uh, what was called the portlet standards. I mean, the, 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 the web interface can be decomposed in small pieces of code which are called portlets. And the portlets can be moved from one portal to the other if the standards, the JSR 186, 168 or 286 are, are supported. For the authentication, as I said before, I mean, we, uh, we leverage on the SAML standards and on the Shibboleth and simple SAML PHP implementations for federated authentication. For the authorization, we use LDAP, LDAP-based registries, authorization services. For the management of digital certificates on smart cards, so we do not require any more users to own digital certificates because this was one of the biggest barriers to overcome. So we use uh, what is called the robot certificates which are burned on smart cards, on USB form factor smart cards, which are plugged on special machines that we call e-token servers. So the portals create, I mean, uh, uh, use this, uh, this uh, e-token servers to create the certificates which are needed to, uh, f to sign the transactions on grids and clouds without the user having to cope with this uh, complex things. For the application interface to the underlying middleware, we are using SAGA, which has been uh, uh, defined by the Open Grid Forum, and we are using the Java implementation, which nicely match with the fact that uh, the portal framework that we're using is entirely based on Java. And the adoption of Java has been done on purpose to, to, to have it open and uh, to have possible contribution for everybody. I mean, even from classes or uh, undergrad students and uh, try to spread this in the university curricula. And to, as an interface to cloud computing, as I said, we are using OCCI, which is again one of the standards promoted by the Open Grid Forum, and we are using the ROCCI implementation, the, uh, which is a Ruby-based implementation of these OCCI standards. Another standard that uh, we are uh, looking carefully uh, at, and we do not, we do not uh, 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 include at the moment, but we are, we are aiming to include it, is the CDMI, uh, the Computing Data Management Interface, which has been developed by um, uh, uh, other, uh, other standard, standard, standard bodies, and uh, like uh, OSIS, and uh, uh, to, to interface, to simply interface different kind of uh, uh, cloud storage infrastructures. So, I would like to, uh, uh, to underline once again the importance of standards concentrating on this. So, uh, using uh, portlets, uh, portals can be, uh, portals can be uh, imagined, can be thought as a small Lego construction, so where you have the Lego bricks. So the advantage of Lego bricks is the unit is easy. And you easily combine units because the way to combine them is quite straightforward. But you can do also complicated things with the small units, and you can do even more complicated things with the same units. So the idea of adopting the standards is that portal science gateways can be made of units that can be moved across science gateways and can be reskin, for example, if you want to adapt to the look and feel the same of the different portals, but from the inside, I mean inside, they are the same. And the, the, the power of the standards is that you can uh, reuse this, you, 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 you can reuse this component. So, uh, what, uh, uh, in our opinion, in very important uh, requirements for building science gateways are standard compliance, simplicity, easiness of use. I mean, those two comes directly from the IT acceptance model and, of course, reusability. So, uh, we are deploying already science gateways. Some of, these, uh, some of them are, are uh, shown there. We have uh, uh, regional science gateways, so science gateways which contain applications belonging to several domains, but they target a given region. Uh, and uh, we also have thematic science gateways, science gateways, for example, for neurosciences or cultural heritage or ge geosciences. And uh, using the standards uh, to interface different kind of infrastructures, we recently demonstrated 
interoperability not only across different kinds of middleware, but also, and more importantly, across different uh, computing uh, paradigms. Here, uh, we, we have uh, sites running different kinds of middleware. We have grid middleware, we have high-performance computing middleware, we have cloud middleware, and we have uh, uh, grid desktop middleware. And we also have uh, local resource managers running on individual clusters. And uh, using the Science Gateway, we submitted jobs. The same jobs have been pre-deployed on all this kind. On the same application has been pre-deployed on all these kind of infrastructures. And uh, we can steer and execute it seamlessly from the, from the Science Gateway on the different infrastructures. I mean, different colors refer to the different middleware. And you can see here the correspondence, and you can see more middleware in, uh, in the, I mean, we managed to demonstrate multi-middleware, multi-architecture interoperability at very large scale uh, in the context of the uh, Chain Reds project. So, uh, the, this morning we said that uh, 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 people are going to be uh, more and more mobile and entrants should follow and should try to sustain and to support mobile access to everything. So uh, science gateways and infrastructures cannot be an exception in our opinion. So we are trying to, to create mobile science gateways, leveraging on RESTful APIs to access this kind of infrastructures. And we are start building science gateways for several applications. This is an example of a, of a mobile science gateway for, to, for, to manage and access digital repositories. In this particular case, these access uh, digital repositories of uh, cultural heritage contents. Uh, if, if you point your phone on these uh, QR codes, you will be redirected to the uh, page of the App Store where you can download the, uh, the apps from. So it, you, have, uh, you can browse your, your contents, you can inspect, you can uh, get the replica, and uh, we included we ported also in the mobile environment the federated access. So you can access, and this is actu as actually recommended uh, by a recent uh, um, report that has been coordinated by Terena. It's called the Terena AAA AAA report study that has been conducted last year. And in the report, one of the recommendations is actually to increase and support mobile access to um, uh, e-infrastructures, and, uh, and uh, we are trying to combine mobile access with federated access. Uh, we are, as I said, there are opportunities, and these opportunities have been uh, taken. There are several science gateways which are being developed in the region. There is the Azran science gateway, which has been already mentioned uh, um, uh, two days ago at the Chain Rates Workshop, there is the, there is the uh, Science Gateway developed by the Algerian e Science Initiative, and there are other Science Gateways which are being developed in Egypt and Morocco, and they will be soon operational. And thanks to the legal standards, the applications which are already running on other Science Gateways, they will be moved immediately, copied, to these science gateways, so to increase immediately the portfolio of useful applications that the virtual research community of the region could be interested in. Uh, building science gateway is important, but to build a science gateway and to, to have a, a large portfolio and a, a diverse uh, portfolio of applications, we need to involve people and we need to create uh, developers. So we need to transfer the know-how. And for this, so we have come up recently with what we call a Science Gateway Marketplace. The Science Gateway Marketplace is, the is made of different steps and different actors. From one side, you have sing even single users or groups or, virtual or large virtual research communities through surveys, they can propose their own applications to be integrated on a given Science Gateway. And then we are trying to create teams of Science Gateway developers that can pick up one of these applications, develop it, and make the applications available to be integrated in a Science Gateway, like, for example, the Azure Science Gateways, so that the community 
can get access and all the users of the community can use their applications on all the infrastructures the, um, the Science Gateway is connected to. What, the developer, what do the developers gain in this? They gain reputation because they develop applications so their reputation will increase so we are trying to create social, social network of developers. But they will also gain access to the infrastructures to develop their own applications. This is very common. This kind of crowdsourcing, this kind of outsourcing development of applications is very common for mobile applications. We are trying to see if we can reuse this in the Science Gateways uh, domain uh, where these people can belong also from the university, from, the, from courses, and hopefully from entrants and organizations. Actually, this is actually working. We already have a group, a team in Latin America, and we are, we are creating a team here in the Arab region. Uh, of course, uh, we, so we, the Science Gateway is not only a, a picture, it's also a website. So you can go to the website, you can subscribe, uh, and then you can list the applications which are already available. You can pick one, and you have one month to develop it. If you do it, and then the application, the code for the, or the integration can be integrated in a science gateway, and then you will reputation will increase, and you will gain access to the to the science gateway to the particular infrastructure for for uh, uh, more time. So, as I said, once people are registered, you can all support the application you proposed. That's very important uh, to spread and uh, to, uh, um, in, to reward the work of the developers. Because one of the problems uh, uh, with infrastructures and science gateways are not an exception is sustainability. And sustainability means that you have to, you have to create a know-how and you have to create people able to, um, uh, to, to, to spread this paradigm and to use and to uptake the standards. If you want to start, of course, the first step is training. So we have been striving in the last few months to create uh, training material and uh, to, re to receive feedbacks from the developers and f f feedback from other communities. We have a training material web page where you have sections on how to install your development environment, how to uh, create simple portlets, more complex portlets, and, uh, and uh, we ran a web course last July, uh, and all the contents of the web course, the recordings of the lectures, and all the slides uh, and materials are available and can be downloaded or uh, uh, streamed from this, uh, from this uh, um, web page. So let me summarize. Uh, E-infrastructures can be very beneficial platforms. I mean, they can really speed up and improve the, uh, the uh, scientific work and, uh, and uh, um, allow people to tackle uh, more complex uh, multidisciplinary problems. But uh, the problem is that uh, they have to be really easy to use. I mean, uh, I don't think that uh, the web would have been where it is uh, without web browsers. So the easiness of use and the simplicity and the possibility to have high-level graphic interfaces is key to uh, improve the spread, to spread this, uh, this platform. So the framework that we are developing, uh, in a way, changes uh, the way infrastructure can be used, because we are widening the potential user base, uh, including uh, through the federated authentication, and so we are targeting especially non-IT experts and what is called the citizen scientist. So you can easily get access to the gateways and you can easily get access to large computing and storage infrastructures and even propose your, uh, your applications and, or contribute to the development of uh, somebody else's applications. Uh, the standard-based interoperability um, uh, at user application level, uh, we demonstrated that we can enable, through the science gateways, we can enable it not only across middleware, 
but also, and more importantly, as I said, across computing paradigms. So grids, high-performance computing, clouds, desktop grids, volunteering computing are just uh, ways so we, we call different ways of different models of distributed computing. I mean, using standards so we can make them completely transparent from the end user point of view and let end users run applications on all these kind of infrastructures uh, in an easy way. Uh, we need to increase and diversify the portfolio of applications. So this is why we are trying to create an international task force of developers. We are already attracting people. I mean, there are people in Morocco, in Jordan, in Algeria, who are working on this, who are building their own science gateway, and then they, are, and they plan to uh, build applications and to interface applications, up their own applications and also applications coming from the virtual research communities that the NREN or the organization is supporting. And of course, if you want to join it, apply now. I mean, this is a link to the registration page to our Science Gateway Marketplace, and you will be welcome to join us. Thank you very much. So um, we have both general purpose applications. For example, uh, we deployed uh, Octave, which is a clone of MATLAB, which has a very general use. We have R, which is a well, very well-known statistical package. And then we have, uh, uh, we have WRF, for example, which is a de facto standard in uh, uh, meteorological and uh, climatological uh, simulations. We have several bioinformatics um, applications like Gromax, like uh, Hammer, uh, and we also have uh, applications to manage uh, digital repositories in the cultural heritage, in the geospatial domain. Uh, but uh, more importantly, we have developed examples of portlets that can be reused to interface different kind of applications. So if the, the computing model of a given application is the same of an application which has already been interfaced and integrated on a science gateway, the, adapting the portrait to this new application is straightforward. I mean, it doesn't require uh, much time for development. We also have specific uh, domain applications. Like for example, we have three or four applications which are specific for neuroscience for the early diagnosis I mean, they, are, uh, they aim at, uh, at measuring markers for the early diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. So if there are a community in a given country, in a given region, interested in running these applications on the neuroimages of patients, of course, so we can provide applications and we, more importantly, we can put these communities in contact with other neurologists and neuroscientists which are using the gateway in Europe and in other countries for the same reason. So the gateway is more than a tool in itself, is a way to collaborate, is an environment. Uh, science gateways are also called the virtual research environment. So um, it's a way to collaborate and we can, uh, we can easily embed, for example, uh, video conferencing system so that so you can work on a science gateway but you can easily collaborate, virtually collaborate with colleagues. We already did with some of our video conferencing system but of course we are open. I mean, uh, if you have your own video conferencing system, I mean, I, I heard about uh, uh, EduConf. So we were, uh, we could be interested in, uh, in seeing how to enable, to integrate, to embed this kind of video conference system in a science gateway so that you can really do virtual collaboration online. So far, we have created uh, brochures that we have distributed during events. We are creating some videos of the applications, but we are not professional. So, I mean, uh, we, we would really need to have some, I mean, we are looking we are seeking for some help to produce uh, not only screencasts, but video. Uh, I think that uh, Dante has or Jean, I don't remember, uh, recently collaborated with the Decide project to create a video of the Alzheimer's disease and the Decide. Yeah. And uh, the Science Gateway is there. So it's not said explicitly, because I mean, in the end, this is a tool. 
but the science gateway is demonstrated in that video. So we aim at uh, creating other videos where the science gateway can emerge as a tool, is a, is a, is a, is a mean, is not, is not a target. I mean, we really want to promote science and demonstrate that this science is easy to, to do with, uh, thanks to these environments. But it's obviously also a very good opportunity for NRENs to help in the promotion yeah. here. So you should really extend that invitation yeah. to everyone. Yeah. A couple of questions. One is um, for the marketplace. You mentioned the marketplace. That's a great way to make it available. Um, how is it controlled from a security standpoint? Uh, is there code review? Do you do that kind of stuff? And also, um, the, is whatever is posted on there, is it, does it become, is there a, a, a um, uh, is it like licensed, is it uh, open source, does it become open? To everyone, or do people come, uh, have the right to maintain the copyrights? Is there, is there a licensing, any special licensing for that? Uh, so, uh, in this respect, what's important is the adoption of standards. So basically, people go there and register, uh, and we allow up to uh, three concurrent developers for a given application. So once the, the developers say that uh, they, they want to contribute to this application, what do we do? we put in contact the developer with the proposers of the applications because they have to, to work in, 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 uh, in collaboration. So the proposers of the application give us the code that has been deployed on the infrastructure and then they agree the, the, the graphic user interface with the developer. So the, um, the IPR of the application rest with the, with the proposers of course uh, the uh, the uh, um, uh, also the code of the interface the portlet or the portlets are open source the developer gain reputation so we are thinking about um, quantitative estimation of the reputation we are looking at uh, um, up uh, at up uh, uh, um, outsourcing uh, environments similar thing for mobile apps so the developers gain a reputation, and they gain extra time. So the interest for them, I mean, they, they are, I mean unless there are specific cases, they are not paid for, uh, for the application, but they, they, it's, they, they, their portal will be visible. There will be a list of, user, of developers with the portlets that they have developed as a re rewarding the work they have done. And uh, uh, the IPR, of the application is with the, with the proposers or we, I mean, in, there are cases in where uh, proposers are, uh, propose applications which belong to somebody else's, like Octave, for example, or R or whatever. So the, the IPR of the application is not touched. Uh, and uh, we, have, we are in contact, of course, with the infrastructures uh, operators, I mean the, with the regional operation centers, in the cases the applications need to be deployed. In some cases the application is so small that can travel with the job, in other cases it has to be uh, deployed in advance, so we are, uh, of course uh, we are um, um, uh, 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 managing the deployment on grids, but also the creation of virtual machines to be deployed on clouds. I don't know if answers your question. By this, I would like to thank Roberto again.